morning and welcome to our online service uh, today as we celebrate this very special Sunday, uh, which is also the start of Holy Week. Palm Sunday introduces us to the road to Calvary. We see Jesus uh, on a donkey, but also showing the world that he has come to save us and to bring us into new life. As we gather this morning, we are reminded that Palm Sunday uh, rejoices in the coming of the King. But Holy Week leads us down uh, to Jerusalem, to the heart of the events that would unfold on the Thursday evening as well as on the Friday. Uh, Monday, Thursday and Good Friday uh, reminds us of the sacrifice of Jesus, but it also leads us to Easter Sunday and the resurrection. And therefore, we will celebrate Holy Week this week uh, by having a short reflection every day, Monday to Thursday at one o'clock. We will also have a Monday, Thursday service at seven o'clock as well as a Good Friday service at 7 as well. Our Easter Sunday service will be at the normal time of 10.30. That is also the intimations. Um, a kind reminder that uh, there is a Sunday School link on our church website. If you go to www.elgenstgileschurch.co.uk you will find uh, at the right hand corner a link that would provide some Sunday school material uh, as well as some activities and uh, activity sheet. So do have a drop in and uh, remind the children and grandchildren that there is something uh, to do on the church website. Then during the time uh, of uh, the current lockdown, our church office uh, uh, at the Williamson Hall uh, is closed, but you can still reach Kirsty, our church secretary, during uh, uh, church office hours, 9.30 to 12.30, on a mobile number, 077-26-88-2077. Now, we gather today in the presence of God, knowing that he will always be on our side. And the psalm writer said that when we look up at the mountains, we know that our help will be from God. And in that spirit, the people that celebrated Jesus coming into Jerusalem was also aware that their help comes from God. Therefore, you are more than welcome to join us on our YouTube channel to listen to him 367. Hosanna, loud Hosanna. As we gather in the presence of God and preparing to, to listen to his words, we first acknowledge him and come into a mood of conversation. Speaking to God through our prayers, listening to him through his word and the sermon. And once again, uh, being reminded that we are indeed today in the presence of the living God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this Sunday, we give you thanks for creation. That you have created us as your children. And we come, Lord, to worship you this morning. With our heart, our mind, and our soul, to reflect on the answer that you gave the Pharisee when you said that to acknowledge the law and to follow your law means to love you and to love our neighbour. This law is not a yoke, 
It gives us freedom. Freedom to care. Freedom to comfort. Freedom to have hope. And freedom to have peace in you. We have that freedom when we follow your will and journey with you. But Lord, we have to acknowledge that there are moments when we do not follow you. When we are bounded by hatred, bounded by our inability to love, bounded by our inability to comfort and to hope. Lord, take away the bounds of this world. Take away our anxiety and fear and lead us back onto a journey with you so that we can live in your freedom, in your hope and in your peace. Lord, you have shown mercy on us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Christ, have mercy on us. And now, Lord, we pray that we will be renewed, not only in our faith, but also in our journey with you. Help us to love you as we love those around us. Help us to be faithful in our journey and in our prayers and in our discipline so that we may know that you will always be on our side and that we will remember that each and every day in the same way as you have given this prayer to your disciples and to your universal church as we pray together this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Our reading comes from the Gospel of John. Now, to be true and fair, the lectionary reading today is from Matthew chapter 21. But we used that uh, yesterday uh, on our Minister's Minute. And we are going to journey through the Gospel of John during Holy Week. Therefore, we start off uh, in John's Gospel, chapter 12, from verse 12. Jesus comes to Jerusalem, asking, The next day, the great crowd that had come for the festival heard that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem. They took palm branches and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. See, your king is coming, seated on a donkey's colt. At first, the disciples did not understand all of this. Only after Jesus was glorified did they realize that these things had been written about him and that these things had been done to him. Now the crowd that was with them when he called Lazarus from the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. Many people, because they had heard 
that he had performed the sign went out to meet him. So the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Praise be to God for his holy word. There is the t always a tension in the Gospels, and especially true in, in Mark's Gospel, between what Jesus' ministry was really about and how the disciples saw Jesus' journey and mission in this world. And you would have caught that I said the disciples saw Jesus' mission. They thought that he was a, a political leader, uh, someone that would have, have come to free uh, Israel from the Roman Empire's yoke. They believed that the Messiah would have once again put on the throne in Jerusalem someone from the lineage uh, from King David. They saw the restoration of the throne in Jerusalem, that Israel would be free once more. So it is not without a, a doubt that Jesus came into Jerusalem during the feast of the Passover, the time that Israel celebrated their freedom from the yoke of the Egyptians. It was Moses who led God's people out of Egypt into the Promised Land. And as the people gathered for the Passover feast in Jerusalem, they would have been kindly reminded. They would have had this feeling of, uh, of experiencing and looking and yearning for that freedom of the past, to lift the yoke of the Romans and to have once again someone of King David's blood on the throne in Jerusalem. And Jesus fitted the bill. Jesus would have fit the bill because not only was he born from uh, King David's uh, ancestry, but he was also a great teacher. He showed miracles. He uh, fitted the bill of the Old Testament's prophets, of the one that would come and show God's way. It's interesting that even John refers back uh, to the Old Testament from Zechariah 9 verse 9. Do not be afraid, daughter Zion. See, your king is coming seated on a donkey's cult. Yes, suddenly there was a buzz. The people thought, here it is. The time has come. It's the Passover feast. This great teacher will reveal or uh, give us something to hold on to during this time. But Jesus doesn't enter Jerusalem on a war horse. He enters in the world of the prophet Zechariah on a donkey. Now, that might have uh, given a false impression to the people in Jerusalem. Or, that is perhaps the reason why they shout Hosanna. Blessed is the King of Israel. It is true that John writes in his Gospel, in verse 16, At first, his disciples did not understand all this. They didn't understand that Jesus was not going to be the King of Israel, to be seated on the throne of David. No, it was only after Jesus was glorified, it was only at the end of the journey, that they realized these things had been written about him, and that these things had been done to him. Sometimes, hindsight is the perfect sight. But to understand our journey of Holy Week, uh, which leads up to Good Friday, 
we need to look at the beginning. We need to look at how Jesus' disciples saw him. What the people thought that Jesus was going to be as this, this prophet, this perhaps political liberation leader. This Jesus was not. He was the saviour of humanity. He came into this world to bring God's love to each and everyone. To be a bridge between us and God. To renew the relationship between us and God. To be the ultimate and also the last sacrifice between us and God. In Jesus, we saw the Lamb of God coming into our world. In Jesus, we saw God presenting himself as a compassionate, loving and caring God. In Jesus, we saw the miracles, the signs, the sermons, the message of God creating a new world. A world where we are part of his glory. A world where we are called children of God, as John would have written in, in, in his uh, epistle. Yes. What we read in John 12 is not a political or a religious leader coming back into, uh, into the fold, ripping up uh, the yoke of the Roman Empire. No, it is God coming into our world, showing us his way, bringing us his peace. But, but it was still shrouded. The, the people didn't understand it. Many times, commentators will dwell on this point that the same people who shouted Hosanna on Palm Sunday would have been present the Thursday and the Friday when Jesus could have been released, shouting, Crucify him. Yes, this is a strange picture that we are seeing in John 12. But it will, all be, it will all be revealed. It will all become clearer as we journey to the cross. That Jesus came to save us, humanity, from its own bounds, from the things that makes us anxious and fearful to bring us into a new light, into God's peace, but also into God's joy. Knowing that where Jesus comes, where Jesus is present, we know that we are also within his blessing. A, pop a popular scholar once said that we have the wrong impression of Jesus sometimes. We think that wherever we are, that we carry Jesus uh, into a room or into a, a certain uh, uh, situation. The thing is, Jesus is already there. It is for us to point at him as John the Baptist did in, uh, in John 2 saying there is the Lamb of God. Palm Sunday becomes a reality when we look past the, the palm trees, when we look past the hosannas, when we look past the people shouting that Jesus is the King of Israel and seeing Jesus for who he really is, the Lamb of God. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you came into our world 
to be the final sacrifice, Lamb of God. And Lord, we give you thanks today for your presence in our current situation, that you also lead us back into hope and into peace, into love and into your comfort. Lord, as we journey through Holy Week, looking ahead at Easter, may we be renewed in our faith and know that you are the Lamb of God that not only took away the sins of this world, but also brought God's love. And now, Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for families and friends who are touched by the pandemic that we are currently finding ourselves in. We pray for those who are struggling with their health. We pray for our frontline staff in the NHS, in our care homes, those who clean, those who care, those who are also your healing hands at this very moment. Lord, we pray that you will protect each one of us, that we will be safe within you, but that we will also know that as we live, as we go about our, our daily program, that you still shape our society and that through our prayers we also bring to you those who so diligently and through their own self-sacrifice are keeping our country running. We pray, Lord, especially for our police service, fire service, ambulance, paramedics, teachers, those who look after the children of our key workers and vulnerable folk in our community. We pray for those who are vulnerable at this very moment that you will use us as your church to be your arms, hands and feet during this time. We pray, Lord, for wisdom in our government as we pray for our Queen, the ministers in Westminster and Holyrood, but also for our local council in Murray that are also providing us still with the necessary service to keep life as normal as possible. But Lord, we also pray for your church here in this parish, but in Scotland, in the United Kingdom, but to the far ends of the earth, that you will protect your church, that we will be one in prayer, that, we'll, that we will unite in our comfort and hope and peace, but more so, that we will love those around us, as you have shown your love to us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray all this. Amen. I hope that you will join us again tomorrow at 1 for our first Holy Week service. And you can now sing along or just read the words of hymn 393. A hymn, a, a prayer to us as God's people but also for God's creation, for everyone that frames our society. In the words, we turn to God when we are sorely pressed. A kind reminder that there will be some Sunday School material available on our church website. Do uh, enjoy that. And to all of you on the Sunday, receive the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, and may God's love and comfort and peace be with us now and evermore. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and hope to see you soon during this week. Goodbye.